we have a moral imperative to fight for justice. I, I believe we really have no choice. In 1966, in severe emotional distress after a miscarriage, 21-year-old Judy Chamberlain was committed to a psychiatric hospital. Judy quickly discovered that once she became a patient, it was nearly impossible to regain her freedom. She was told that she would never be able to live outside an institution. The day that, that they took my own freedom away, was the day that I, I dedicated myself to this cause. I said, this is wrong. This is wrong. This should not happen to anyone. Judy defied her prognosis and went on to help found what is known as the psychiatric user, survivor, and ex-patient movement. It was the heady era of civil rights, consciousness raising, women's liberation, and gay liberation. Judy drew courage and inspiration from these popular movements. By 1971, she was working with the Mental Patients Liberation Project in New York, and the rest, as they say, is history. I first actually read um, On Our Own when I was in a mental health residence. Um, and I found the book in the library. And it was like discovering a magical escape tunnel from the psychic prison that I was in. People are still being punished. For, for, for being in pain and for feeling their pain and for trying to speak their pain. And that's why there's such an enormous need for alternative crisis facilities uh, uh, that we need to develop. Because, yeah, it is hard to be around somebody who's not sleeping or crying all the time or screaming or tearing at their flesh or whatever. What's so important is to try to connect people with that, that this is real and this is what's happening to them and this is what they are feeling. The user-survivor movement has certain basic principles, uh, and these uh, are overarching. They vary from organization to organization around the world, but they basically fall into certain major categories. And the main one is that we speak for ourselves, that other people may claim to speak for us, but no one can speak in our voice, our own voices, our own authentic voice, the voice of people who themselves um, have been labeled. That Freedom and self-determination are basic human rights that must not be eroded or ended because of a medical diagnosis. And like the farm workers and, 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 and like the, the, the black people in the segregated South, uh, people labeled with mental disabilities are largely invisible to the wider world. To the extent that they think of us at all, they usually think of us as a problem that somebody has to do something about and not as human beings, individuals, each one of us, deserving of human dignity. And we are now living in a time of a historical shift, uh, where people with mental illness, like other groups that have historically been without power, are in the process of claiming our right to self-determination. For the rest of her life, Judy worked tirelessly with other users and survivors of psychiatry to achieve human rights, self-determination, and non-coercive alternatives. She also built many bridges with the cross-disability movement. Her legacy lives on today in an international movement of people who work to realize the courageous vision that she and other pioneers set in motion nearly 40 years ago. And uh, the slogan of the disability movement worldwide, uh, I think, best sums up what it is that we want, what it is that we believe is uh, just, and what we believe that will ultimately prevail, which is nothing about us without us.